my goodness. So I know that this, that the issues that you're feeling had were progressing, you know, to some pretty dark places. Uh, so as you went into adulthood, as you, you know, as you got older, um, were things getting worse and worse and worse as you, as you went? Was there ever a time where you thought, you know, there's a light at the end of the, of the tunnel, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get better? Not until very, very recently. Um, yeah. I went, and it went through phases. I was always at some level of depression, but it went through phases where I would be in massive depressions, and then it would be relatively okay. Um, and that went on for years, and when things did get bad, I would go to the doctor, and I would say, hey, I need antidepressants, and, and sometimes they'd put me on antidepressants. That was turned out to be a good thing the antidepressants never did what they were supposed to do but they also brought side effects that usually after a fairly short period of time i was like i'd rather have the depression than deal with the side effects so at various yeah. times when it got bad i would go on antidepressants that didn't work and sucked and so then i'd come off them and then i'd go through this cycle again where you know i hey hey it's not so bad right now and then i would fall into this massive trough of depression and, and off we'd go again in um i can't remember what year it was but about 14 years ago it got especially bad and over the course of a year i was put on five different antidepressants all of had horrible side effects one of them in particular and i like to share this story because i think it's really important given the where we are especially in america today one of the antidepressants made me violent now i'm not a violent person but after i went on this antidepressant i started doing things like throwing coffee tables across the room and um, i actually assaulted somebody luckily for me uh, that person didn't press charges, but I could very, very easily have ended up on a felony assault charge and, and been incarcerated for that. And I, I thank wow. my lucky stars that the, that the person involved realized that it was not me, but it was the, the medication that was causing that change in my character. And I'm very, I'm very, very grateful for that. But it does make me wonder how many people who are incarcerated or who have felonies it was really not them it was and i'm not looking to yeah. to give anyone who deserves to be incarcerated a break i'm i'm not saying that at all i'm but i given my experience i'm absolutely certain that there are probably a not insignificant number of people who have ended up in trouble because as a direct result of medications they've been on for mental health challenges rather than it being that they're a bad person or that they're a typically a violent person because as soon as i came off the medication i've never i've never thrown furniture since i've never raged like that since i've never felt the need to assault anybody since so that that's why I like to share that story because people look at me and they go, you know, well, she wouldn't hurt a flea. And that's true, except if you put me on the wrong medication. So we talk a lot of here about, um, or I talk a lot about the Pottinger's cats. I don't know if you've, you've heard about this experiment, but uh, Dr. Pottinger had a uh, group of cats that he, um, he put them on a special diet that was specifically deficient in, I forget what, mineral but they it was it was it was deficient in in one piece of of uh of you know it's something that was important for the cats to to have and the first generation of cats were they were okay they got along fine without it the next generation there were a few problems but for the most part they got along without it the next generation of cats and so as each generation of cats were uh were you know deficient in this in this mineral they became worse and worse and worse and worse and we had all these birth defects how these mental defects how these problems that are wrong with them and you know we're at the end now of a 75 year dietary experiment where we've been telling our people to eat you know lots of whole wheat uh you know limit their saturated fat uh eat lots of vegetable oils and corn oil and it seems that we have made our the population deficient in some of these really important 
vitamins and minerals and just fat in general. And we're seeing these really scary rates of, of mental health issues. And I'm convinced, I'm, I'm totally convinced, and there's not been a whole lot of science on this yet, but I am 100% convinced that all of these kids that are going into their, their schools and shooting them up and doing these terrible things, we, f we always find out that they're on these, you know, this terrible psycho, you know, psychiatric medications. I'm convinced it's not just because they've been on a bad diet their whole life, but it's because their parents were on a bad diet, their grandparents were on a bad diet, and they've, they've, there are this multi-generational effect of, of poor diet and these effects that are, you know, coming down from generation to generation to gener generation. And each generation is like a bad copy that comes out of the Xerox machine, a little paler, a little worse off. And we're seeing some really terrible things, especially from our kids right now. Um, and, uh, and I, I, you know, I'm convinced it's dietary related. I, I'm convinced the reason there's so many psychiatric drugs that have been uh, prescribed is because we're, We've screwed up our diet so bad. You have any thoughts on that? I I definitely agree that diet is a huge part of it. And when I tell the rest of my story, you'll understand why I say only part of it. Um, yeah. Because that was part of my fix, but not all of it. I definitely think that food has a massive part to play in this. And and the the tragic irony of my, you know, almost becoming a incarcerated felon story is that those people who who do find themselves incarcerated for things similar to me which i don't think a lot of them should be there but what they feed them when they get them into prison right. is the most disastrous food for mental exactly. health the most disastrous food for mental health so we 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 lock them up and then we feed them food that is going to make them worse. And, and so, but, you know, and at the risk of, of, of getting a bit political, I, I just, I, in my little world, one of the places that we could make the biggest difference is changing the dietary um, guidelines for institutions. Yep. Or, you know, if we could do that in the institutions before the prisons, like uh, public schools. Absolutely. Yes. I'm not yep. just talking about the after institutions. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about schools, right. especially schools, especially hospitals. Schools. I remember, um, I can't remember how many years ago now, I had a major surgery 12, 10, 12 years ago. I came out for, it was a major surgery. I came out from the anesthetic. They fed me my first meal, my dinner for the day I had a significant body part removed was gummy bears. Oh my gosh. Yep. It didn't surprise me at all though. So, you know, I, I think the, the institutions, the hospitals and the schools, we could change the face of what's happening in this country just by doing that. But then on the other side, if people do end up in a prison, the food they're giving them is simply exacerbating the problem yeah, in my exactly. opinion.